You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nery here from Drake Queen Gaming. It's Sevy to me, I'm one of the Gaming Dragons. Today I'm coming back at you the Let's Play episode of A Masquerade in the Woods, Shepherd's Path. So y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and I do not have a good feeling about this part. Oh my goodness. Alright. With a nervous expression, he watches me unzip and pull my semi from behind the jock strap. I slide my paw from his shoulder to the back of his neck, digging my fingers through the fur and guide him in. Hmm. Good boy. I moan, leaning my head back. It quickly becomes clear just how first time this is. Despite the long snout, he can't seem to get his teeth out of the way. Huh? He reluctantly bobs his head up and down my she I -e -e. This isn't gonna get me anywhere. I sigh, pulling out. He coughs, lifting paw to wipe the drool from his muzzle. I grip the tuft of fur on his neck, guiding his face towards mine as I lean down. I press the side of my muzzle to his, getting a good whiff of the cheap wine still clinging to the fur. No kissing. Huh? No, no kissing. He repeats in my ear. I stop, letting go of him and stand back up. I... I don't like kissing. I let an audible sigh slip, throwing my arm out to my side. Fine, what do you want to do? He swallows. His eyes not leaving the dark carpeted floor. I want to tie you up. I give him an annoyed glare. Well, he can see it anyway. What a fucking disaster of a night. I walk back to the table, picking up his glass and hand it to him. But perhaps a little too much for us, I clink mine against his and down my wine. As my lips part the cheap beaker, I see the fox staring up at me, eyes fixed on the cup in my paw. I wipe my muzzle at the back of my arm, setting the glass down on the drawer. I cross my arms and grab the bottom of my tank top, pulling it over my head. Let's do it! Was that there before? No, it wasn't. Okay. Might as well make the best of it. At least it'll make for a good story to tell my friends. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna have to, uh... Huh. Dropping my pants to the floor, I crawl up on the bed behind him, splaying out and lifting the rope with my foot. Tyler gets up, puts his glass down next to mine, and grabs the rope. You know how to do this stuff? It's like, you know. <clears throat> hey! This is not going to end well for someone. <clears throat> yes. He undoes the knot, holding it together, and wraps it around my wrist. He throws the excess under the bed, walks over, and ties my other paw down. Yeah, maybe he's got some experience with this after all. Oh, nice. After having done the same with my feet, he stands up at the end of the bed, looking down over me. I try to strike the sexiest pose I can in my restraints, giggling at how silly it must look. Tyler doesn't seem to find it as funny as I do. He turns back to the dresser, bends down, and searches it. I plop my head down on the pillow, feeling the room begin to spin. A nice kind of buzz only wine gives you. Wait, which one's Tyler and which one's Chester? Oh, okay. I'm kind of surprised it's sitting in, sitting in so damn fast. I'm not usually this much of a lightweight. Uh, which one's Chester? I, I kind of lost track. Uh, save for his red light, yeah? When he doesn't respond, I tilt my head, trying to see what the fox is up to. I is that a camera? I hear my words slur as I speak, a warm sensation moving through my body. Tyler doesn't answer, instead he walks around the bed to my be to bed to my side. Loud, shitty rock music begins playing. The blind-out speakers of the phone letting out a screeching, ear-piercing sound that rattles around my skull. What are you... It's 
getting a bit difficult to breathe. Even more so as I feel the fox climb up on top of me, straddling my hips. Oh, did it switch perspectives? I try lifting my arms against the restraints, but it's difficult enough getting them off the bed to begin with. His breath is heavy as he strokes his paws over my naked chest. I moan, feeling my body sink into the bed as his fingers sift through my thick coat. His paws move off my chest and let out a soft, and I let out a soft whine. You'll make a great ticket. What? I breathlessly moan as a fillish cold, sharp blade pierced my chest, cutting into one of my ribs. I try to scream, but I can't breathe. Oh god. Oh god. Oh my god. Motherfucker, are you really trying to save the damn safe word? Are you being stabbed to death? Really? Red. Jesus. Fifty-seven Park Road, apartment two zero two, blackmail. Just like the cipher said. First thing that hits is the smell. It's sterile, alcoholic, overwhelmingly so. It burns the nostrils to the point of stinging and makes it difficult to smell anything but that. But it doesn't entirely cover up the irony, spoiled spoiled meat this is irony, spoiled meat like smell hiding beneath. I take a couple steps to the cramped place. Find the light switch. The place is clean. Too clean. It looks as if whoever occupied the place never even set foot in it. Everything from the faux leather couch to the metal frame chairs stand perfectly, symmet perfectly symmetrically to the layout of the cramped space. The bed is neat, but lacking any covers. Not a single speck of dust on the drawer beneath next to it. I walk up next to the window. I walk up to the window, pulling the blind shut by with shut with my glove paws. I let my backpack slip down my shoulders as I unzip it and reach inside. Pulling out the small, four-inch spray bottle, taped over with a large L written in Sharpie, I throw my bag back over my shoulder. That's ink. Thanks, ink. I mumble as I cover the, cover the nose holes with one paw and begin spraying the place down with turret with luminol. Ay, 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 ay. Once sufficiently covered, I turn the lights back off. Ooh. And immediately the place lights up like a rave party. Large splatters cover the wall above the bed, seeming to have originated from the center of the mattress. This is where it happened. I follow the luminescent streaks down the mattress onto the floor. A long trail of it leads towards the bathroom. Oh goody. Ah, oh, come on, you wonderful bastard. Mordecai, okay, fine. Fine, you get away with it this time. Mordecai. Damn it, that's so good. Oh, I got a little bit of editing to do for this video. God, ugh, it was gruesome. Gruesome, I say. God, I can't wait for the next episode. This has really been a great horror of the end so far. I got some, I got a lot of theories as to what's going on. Um, so it looks like we're at the end of our playthrough of this for now. I've got all the roots as far as I can so far. So, um, yeah. If there's any other horror vein you guys want me to cover, just let me know, because we definitely have a spot for one. Anyway, thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell, and uh, check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our bronze tier patrons. Thank y'all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your donations. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silvermoon. Thank you so much for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. And thank you to our gold tier patron, Amr. 
You're awesome. We love you, and we hope you enjoy your new icon. Anyway, if y'all want to get your name in the credits and get access to our Not Safe for Work videos, it's as little as $5. Anyway, I love you all, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye!